Good morning, everybody. I don't know if Senator Udall is still here, but there he is. Thank you, Mark, for organizing all of this once again, and thanks for inviting me. Um, everybody on this panel knows a lot more about higher education than I do, so I'm going to let you listen to them. But I want to dwell for just a moment on why this is important. Some of you have seen a chart that, I, that I've used on the floor and I often use in my town hall meetings that describes the structural, um, uh, significant structural issues that we have in our economy. And that chart has four lines on it. The top one is our gross domestic product, our GDP, which is higher today than it was when we went into this recession. The second line shows our productivity, our productivity index. We have become the most productive economy in the history of our country and probably in the history of the world because of our response to competition from China and India, because of our use of technology in areas outside of education, I might say, and because of the recession itself, which drove firms to figure out how to get through this downturn with fewer people. So that index is now going straight up. And that's all good news, but there are two other lines that I show. One is that for the last decade and a half, median family income has fallen in this country for the first time in the country's history. And we have 23 or 24 million people that are un unemployed or underemployed in this economy. For the second time in our history, the first time being the George Bush, the second recovery, uh, job growth and wage growth has decoupled from economic growth. And that is a significant challenge for us going forward, and I think there are two answers to that, and they're both related to education. One is innovation. We have to be the most innovative economy in the world, and that's not the topic for today, but you need educated people to do that. And the second is education itself, because the worst the unemployment rate ever got for people with a college degree in the worst recession since the Great Depression was 4.5%, which is a pretty significant stress test of the value that we place on a college education. But we're moving in the wrong direction. When George Bush, the son, this is not a partisan observation, it is a temporal observation. When he became president 12 years ago, we led the world in the production of college graduates. Today we are 16th in the world. That's over a 12 year period. Not because we're doing something differently than we were doing 12 years ago. In fact, we're emphatically doing the same thing. But because other co countries have figured out uh, that they want to win the human capital race at a time when we have decided to disinvest in higher education at the state and the federal uh, level. Uh, the second thing is that if you are a child living in poverty in this country, your chances of getting a college degree are roughly 9 in 100, which means that if you're born poor, 91 out of 100 of you, unless we change the delivery model of both K-12 and higher education dramatically, <coughs> Uh, are going to be at the margin of our democracy and the margin of our economy. So I just want to give us a sense of urgency about the work that we have to do. And I know there was a moment during this presidential campaign when one of the candidates said that it was snobby to want people to get a college education. In fairness to him, he later apologized for saying that, and he should have. Because each of us that have our own kids knows we want them to be able to make that affirmative choice. And if we care about the future of this economy and the future of this democracy, we need our kids, particularly our kids living in poverty, to be able to make that affirmative choice. Here are the three things that I would change. Accessibility in the sense that the kids that are graduating from K-12 are actually ready to go rather than ready to be remediated when they get to higher education, which is the case, that too, too often the case. Affordability, which we have done a horrible job of as a generation. When our parents and grandparents made sure it was a priority to have college affordable, we have not made it a priority. And the third, uh, I just will align myself with what the Secretary just said. We are on the cusp of a revolution, a technological revolution in the delivery of our K-12 education and our higher education. And I don't think that can come soon enough. Uh, and I think that actually it will help us on the first two uh, element. So I will stop there and I look forward to the conversation. Thanks for having me, Mark. Thank you.